This video is the uh, sequel to the first video I made on Kitchen Islands. In the first video, I showed you how I installed a Kitchen Island where we have one row of cabinets, whereas in this video, I will show you how I installed back-to-back -back cabinets in an island. And uh, then you can say, but what about the assembly instruction from IKEA? Because in that one, I have seen they are showing exactly how to install a kitchen island when the cabinets are sitting back to back. Why can I not just follow that one? Well, there's two problems with that one. The first problem is that if you install these cabinets back to back, we don't have any panels we can put on the side of those cabinets unless we cut the width of the cabinet. And if we do cut the width of the cabinet, there's a big chance that where those two cuts will meet, it will look something like this. And you have to agree, it does look cool, right? So we want to have two cabinets that are sitting next to each other with no cut in between. And that means we have to push those two cabinets a tiny bit away from each other so the distance from the two fronts of the cabinet will match the panels we are putting on the island. And the second problem is that in the IKEA instruction, we only attach those cabinets at the top and then we secure them to the bottom into the island brackets. But there is a slight chance that these two cabinets will not sit really tight at the bottom because we have no control of that distance because we have nothing down there, according to the instruction from IKEA, that keep that uh, distance the same as it is at the very top. And we need that because we need the front of those two cabinets to be parallel. Otherwise, the panels will never sit right, never. So these two problems are the reason for I do not want to install a back-to-back -back cabinet in an island the way IKEA suggests. Keep watching and you will see how I'd, I address these two issues when I install a uh, kitchen island with cabinets sitting back-to-back. I'm not going to show you how to assemble the cabinets because they are pretty much done in the same manner as we did for the single row island. What I will do though is to point out where I make it uh, a bit different. And the first thing you'll see is that if you look at this bracket and compare to the picture I show you here that the position of that bracket at the very top for the uh, island uh, assembly kit is sitting a bit different. In the uh, For the single row island we only use two screws and it was sitting back in the oval holes for the double row island we're using three screws and they're sitting in the same manner as the bracket that holds the cabinet on the wall which is different would be sitting so pay attention to that and uh, make sure you do it like that when you continue to assemble the cabinets also uh, note here that the lower bracket for the island assembly kit is sitting in the same way as we did for the single row cabinet. So it's only the upper bracket you put on differently. The next thing we're doing differently, and that's because we have pushed those brackets uh, towards the back of the cabinet, the MDF uh, Island Assembly Kit strip will sit uh, pushed out as well. And we want that to be protruding from the cabinet before it was sitting within the footprint of the cabinet. And now it's protruding the thickness of that strip. So go ahead and do that. But since it was only the upper bracket we moved, it's only the upper uh, strip that is sitting out like that for now. And the reason for doing that is that now we have the same distance from the front of the cabinet to the back of that strip that we would have if the cabinet was sitting on a rail towards a wall. And that means when we use a standard panel, in this case, a 25 by 30 inch panel, we do not have to cut it at the back. And then we can achieve what I was talking about before, that we can have two panels sitting back to back uncut, and that will uh, make the island so much better. So that's the reason for us putting that strip in between, is to accommodating that extra distance I talked about in the introduction to this video. And you can see that clearly in that picture here uh, from the IKEA planner, where I have pushed those cabinets a bit away from each other. So now those panels I put on the side, they can be sitting back to back without the need for me cutting them, right? So after you have assembled all the cabinets for your island, all of them, you can take one row and I suggest to take the full depth one. If you have a full depth and you have a shallow row, take the full depth row 
with the uh, assembly kit strip protruding like we just talked about and put it up where you want it and make sure that it's sitting in the right location. And remember to make sure that you have four and a half inches from the bottom of the cabinet down to the floor as a minimum before we proceed. Now it's time to assemble the island support brackets and we do that in the exact same way we did for the single row island. However, pay attention to the instruction now because clearly the bracket needs to sit at a different location and we have more of them. I will not, however, put the one right in the middle there because there's no way you can get your arms in and tighten any of those screws. I don't know what IKEA was thinking, so just don't put that one up, but put the other ones on. However, we don't put them all on to begin with. You only put on those that are sitting under that one row we have put on the floor already, but putting those two on will secure that row of cabinets to the floor and we can proceed to build the second row of the kitchen island. Before we do that though, I wanna mention that in this situation, we have a floor where I can put in uh, screws directly. I do not have to remove the cabinets as I did for the single row kitchen in that video because we had a tile floor there and I did it differently. So in this situation, I can take my electric screwdriver and I can put on my 90 degree angle uh, tool and I can reach in and screw those brackets directly into the floor without the need to remove the cabinets. Makes it a, a little bit easier and faster. Now we're getting to that part where I have to add some more distance between the two cabinets that are sitting in the row. And with that one row uh, securely tied into the floor, I can bring out some more of that material that comes with the assembly kit and I can take some nails and I can hammer it to the back of the cabinet. In the picture you see I have put up one layer, but I need two layers because as you can imagine, we have two cabinets sitting back to back and at the top we have two strips that are protruding. So that is two layers. So I have to do the same at the bottom. For the convenience of installation, it's so much better and so much easier to put those two layers on the same row of cabinets, the one I have installed already, instead of trying to put them on the second row right because then you have to do them cabinet by cabinet because you cannot lift the full row in place but what we can do is we can put two layers up as you see here not just one layer i do not have a picture with two layers and i apologize for that but i'm sure you can figure it out that you need to put two layers of that strip material on the back of that row of cabinets and when those strips has been mounted you can take your cabinets and you can put them up against the row that is sitting on the floor already. And now you can tie those two or three or four, how many cabinets you have, together with each other. Not to the other row just yet, but just together so those three or four cabinets are securely tightened to each other. And when that is done, it is time to move those cabinets sideways so they line up at the very end. And that can be a bit tricky especially if you do not have identical cabinets in width on, on, on both sides of the uh, cabinet island. And you can see in, in, in this situation, the cabinets I have, they are not the same width. They are the same width in total, but not the individual cabinets. And that makes it sometimes a bit difficult because then the total length of that island, of that pack of cabinets might not be identical. So you, in, in that case, you have to choose where do you want the discrepancy because there might be a little bit, but nothing, nothing that anyone will see and you are the only one who will know that. What I do is that I pick my primary and that's the one where I want it to be the nicest. And uh, then I put up something really uh, uh, straight and uh, relatively stiff. And I, most often I use my, uh, my little level and then I make sure that those two cabinet ends are flush. And uh, that's important because otherwise the panel will not sit nicely when we put the panels on. In this picture, I have moved myself to the other end of the island just to check that those cabinets are lining up as well. And I can do the same uh, at the bottom of the cabinet just to make sure that everything is sitting uh, nice uh, as it's supposed to. What I've done in this picture is I have taken those brackets that uh, are from the cabinets when if the cabinet was sitting on a rail and they are actually garbage, but I put them on at the bottom of the cabinet uh, temporarily. And I do that because then I can put on my clamp and I can clamp those two cabinets so they are sitting really tight 
when I put in the screws on the inside from one cabinet to the other. I do that only because I do not have clamps that are long enough to reach all the way. But this is a fairly easy way of doing it and I make sure that those cabinets, they do not move while I secure the two rows of cabinets into each other. And securing these cabinets into the back of each other is exactly what I'm doing now. And you just bring out whatever screws you have because you cannot really um, do it wrong because there's no panels you can break through on the other side. If you use a screw that's a tiny bit too long, it will protrude and sit inside the cabinet. So you don't want to do that either. But just take any screws and, uh, and um, start putting them in and make sure you put screws at the top and at the bottom as well. So those cabinets are sitting back to back and are tied really well together. When that is done, you can take off your clamp and you can take off uh, those brackets you put on. Now that the cabinets has been firmly secured to each other, it's time to secure them into the floor. And we have put some of those support brackets in already. Now you can bring out the rest of them and put under the cabinets and secure them to the floor and secure the cabinets to the brackets. However, before you do that, you want to make sure that the island is sitting where you want it on the uh, on the floor so it hasn't moved a tiny bit while you have been doing all this uh, uh, building uh, the island. So the way I check it, if I have, uh, for instance, uh, hardwood floors where I got lines or tiles where I got lines, then I take my square and I make sure that it is parallel to the lines in the floor. It's not a big deal. I'm sure you know what I mean. But it's important because you don't want to be standing in front of your island looking down and then it's all off compared to the lines on the floor. The island needs to be parallel to the lines on the floor. I'm sure I don't need to tell you now how to secure the cabinets into the support bracket, but this is uh, just a reminder then that you take those screws that come with the, with the kit and you put them through the bottom of the cabinet when everything has been aligned and you uh, screw them into those uh, two by fours. Also, that you uh, secure those brackets on the two by fours when the other one has been put in. So everything is sitting tight and firmly together and the island is not movable on the floor anymore. Finally, we're getting to putting on the panels on the island. And just because we have put the strip in between those two rows of cabinets, we now can put on panels pretty much without cutting them. We have to cut them at the top. And uh, let me start by saying one thing that uh, is important, that I never ever cut panels at the floor, no matter how not level the floor is. Because when you cut an MDF panel and have an open cut and you put it at the floor, I do believe that you can, you can caulk and you can epoxy and you can add whatever you wanna add. At some point, moisture will get in and the panel will be ruined. I know a lot of people are thinking uh, differently, but this is my position and I uh, will, uh, will uh, stick with it. I will not do it any differently. So anyway, on that note, let's put some uh, panels on this island. Since the island now have the uh, accurate distance where we can use standard panel uh, without cutting them, you can see we can put a 25 inch wide and a 15 inch wide panel on this island. If you want the panels to stop at the bottom of the uh, cabinet that you can cut them to the height of 30 inches. The 25 by 30 will fit without cutting at all. And the other one you can take a 32 and a half high panel and cut to 30. However, if you wanna have them to run all the way to the floor, you need to so do something different. For the uh, narrow one, you can use a 42 inch high panel and just cut that. And for the wider one, the 25 inch, in the width, you can take a 25 by 80 and cut it in two because you will need one for the other end as well. And then you can use those panels and let them run all the way to the floor. I will make a video later showing exactly how to cut and put on all those panels. It's not part of this one. I'm just telling you which material you should use. Now, as you can see, I have added some panels to the right side of this island and I have put them in the other order than I did to the left. And here's the reason for that. If you put the 25 inch wide panel on the full depth cabinet and the 15 inch wide cabinet on the shallow cabinet, there is a chance that they are not sitting exactly flush with each other. And that's why you want to swap them, right? You wanna have the 25 inch 
white panel protruding and overlapping that opening you have between those two cabinets that will not only make the two panels sit completely flush with each other but it will also make sure that that two rows of uh, cabinets will never ever ever move away from each other so that's what you want to do you don't want to put them as you see to the left no you want to put them as i have them on the right side because by securing that white panel with screws from both cabinets those cabinets will be sitting really well i know i said that twice but it is important and this is how it looks in the planner when you have panels that are not running to the floor or you have panels running all the way to the floor. And in this picture, you can see that actual uh, kitchen I installed where the panels are running uh, to the floor. And as you will see, I have the shallow cabinets facing to the right, but the panel sitting right at the side of this cabinet is the wide one. So the joint between those two panels are sitting on the side of the full depth cabinets. I hope you uh, learned a bit from this video and will now have the courage to take on a double row island. It is not difficult and uh, I'm sure you can do it.